Welcome to another episode of Comsbrief Telecom Basics. In this video series, we'll be talking about the most basic telecom terms in the simplest possible way. I'll try to keep things simple, but if something is unclear, do let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to explain it right there. So let's dive right in and today's topic is this one. Today's topic is the difference between digital and analog mobile networks. When we talk about mobile networks, especially 4G LTE and 5G NR networks, we often associate them with the digitization of our lives and ecosystem. But what we have to remember is that the mobile networks started their own lives, own journey, as an analog network. Later, they became digital, but that was not always the case. Now, why is this information even important? All mobile networks today are digital, so do we even need to worry about the difference between digital and analog networks? Well, if you plan to start your very own telecom museum at some point in your life, then you should definitely spend a lot of time on this topic. However, if you just want to learn a little bit about the history to better understand the current and future mobile networks, then let me give you a very quick and practical overview. First of all, let's stay focused on mobile networks only, so we'll not be getting into the basics of digital and analog communications. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to show you uh, some large analog wall clocks to differentiate analog from digital, and we'll probably end up almost talking like a telecom museum anyway. So let's just focus on the mobile networks, so 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G mobile networks. If you look at this slide on the screen, there have been five generations of mobile networks, which are referred to as 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. The first generation was analog, and all the other generations were digital. So basically, 1G was analog, and 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G were digital. If we start at the bottom of this table and go bottom up, 1G was commercially introduced in 1979, but the main deployments for 1G took place in the early 1980s. The first generation networks used a range of analog technologies including AMPS, Advanced Mobile Phone System, NMT, Nordic Mobile Telephony, TAX, Total Access Communication System, JTAX, Japan or Japanese version of Total Access Communication Systems, and CNETS, Radio Telephone Network C. AMPS or Advanced Mobile Phone System started in the US and was adopted as the 1G analog standard by various other countries. In the UK, for example, TAX or Total Access Communication System was used, which was a variant of AMS. The Nordic countries used NMT, Nordic Mobile Telephone, Germany used CNETS, Radio Telephone Network C, and Japan employed JTAX, the Japanese version of TAX. But the early 1990s is when things started to change big time. This is when the second generation mobile networks marked the beginning of the digital era of mobile communications. The most prominent technologies in 2G are GSM, Global System for Mobile Communications, DMS, Digital Advanced Mobile Phone System, and IS95, Interim Standard 1995. So IS-95 is the CDMA network, uh, which was very popular in the US, for example, and commercially it was called CDMA-1. From there on, 3G technologies like UMTS, Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, and CDMA-2000, uh, so these are the 3G ones, and then the 4G technology LTE and the 5G technology NR have all been digital. But what we have to really understand is what made the 1G networks analog and all the other generations like 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G digital. How is that even possible and what is different about 1G that makes it analog compared to the other technologies that have been digital? To understand that, let's have a look at the basic concept of communication between a phone and a cell tower. As you know, the communication between a mobile phone and a cell tower is wireless. That means that all communication takes place over the air. Yes, you heard that right, the air, the fresh air that you breathe. This air in telecoms is also called the air interface. See what we did here? Now all of a sudden, even air seems like a high-tech thing, uh, but uh, anyway, but that's not the point here. So let's just focus on the air interface now. 
So on the left side here in this picture, we have a cell tower or base station, and on the right side we have a mobile phone or cell phone. The radio signal that the base station sends to the phone, or the phone sends back to the base station, is always analog. Yes, the radio signal is always analog, no matter which technology we talk about. 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, or even when we have 100G, the radio signal will always be analog and it will never be digital. Why? Because real life follows the laws of physics and the radio signal exists in the physical world and it has to follow the physical rules which are analog. Now what makes a technology digital is what happens inside the base station and the phone. That is where the communication is processed, packaged and modified. If digital techniques are applied to the communication inside the base station and cell phone, then the communication is digital. And on the other hand, if analog techniques are applied, the communication is analog. This is where the radio access techniques like multiple access, for example, FDMA and TDMA, etc., and associated modulation schemes, for example, QAM and QPSK, etc., come in. These techniques determine whether the network is digital or analog. Let me show you how. Here on the screen, we have radio access techniques which allow a phone to communicate with the base station. All the processing and modifications that take place inside the base station and the phone are based on these techniques. These techniques determine what happens to my video message, for example. Would the network give my message a bit more bandwidth or would it use a high quality modulation scheme for my message so that it would travel securely, comfortably and completely without losing some of the information? The radio access technique used in 1G networks was FDMA or Frequency Division Multiple Access. FDMA is the most straightforward air interface. But FDMA wasn't so great. Why? Because it had lots of challenges. It wasn't secure, it wasn't robust and it was not very efficient. That's why it was soon replaced by digital radio access technologies. As mobile networks evolved, TDMA, CDMA and OFDMA were introduced. So if you look at the third column here in this picture, you can see that the second generation networks use a combination of FDMA and TDMA. And then later they introduced CDMA for even 2G. 3G networks relied on CDMA technologies, so code division multiple access. 4G and 5G networks use OFDMA or orthogonal frequency division multiple access. Now this OFDMA uses highly efficient digital modulation scheme which makes the communication digital and that's QAM and QPSK. 4G and 5G mobile networks use OFDMA which enables advanced digital modulation schemes like QAM, Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, to use radio network resources more efficiently. That way, these networks achieve the highest possible data rates or bit rates. Digital mobile networks handle all the communication we send, for example, my voice messages, voice calls, YouTube videos, etc. in a digital format. That format requires digital modulation, which in turn makes the communication digital. But as mentioned earlier, as soon as the communication leaves the base station antennas to reach my mobile phone and vice versa, the signal is always analog. The base station and my phone have analog to digital and digital to analog converters to make all of this magic happen. Thanks for watching the video guys, I've written a detailed post on this topic and the link is in the description. And make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm posting new videos all the time.